The creators of ChatGPT used Kenyan workers that were paid less than $2 an hour. Let's talk about it. The current version of ChatGPT can generate text on almost any topic, but its predecessor, GBT3, was prone to blurting out violent and extremely graphic remarks. In order to combat this, an additional tool had to be created that would help AI detect hate speech and remove it from their platforms. So, OpenAI sent thousands of pieces of graphic text to be labeled to an outsourcing firm in Kenya. Much of this text came from the darkest parts of the internet. And when I say dark, I mean dark. Data labelers were paid between $1.32 to $2 an hour to read and label hundreds of pieces of extremely graphic content. The nature of the work caused employees extreme distress, and the wellness counselors they were entitled to were often unhelpful or even unavailable. The outsourcing firm did end their contract with OpenAI early out of concerns for the mental health of their employees, but I think it may have something to do with the lawsuit that the firm and Meta are facing for exposing employees to graphic content without providing adequate support or prior knowledge. AI frequently relies on hidden human labor performed in the global south. These workers support a billion dollar industry and are still being paid pennies. This is Habari and Gemma. Follow me if you want to learn more about African politics and pop culture. Second World War, there was an uprising by the Kikuyu people who wanted their land back. The Kikuyu were herded into concentration camps and fortified villages, almost the entire population of over a million people. People were systematically tortured to death. They invented a new kind of pliers whose purpose was first to crush men's testicles and then to cut them off. They raped women with bayonets. They raped men. Similarly, a favorite technique was to ram sand up the rectum with a stick. Sometimes they were rolled up in barbed wire and kicked around the compound until they bled to death. Some of the British soldiers boasted about this. This is within living memory. The colonial secretary lied about it. The papers documenting it were burnt. The impact of the rich and powerful nations has been so phenomenally murderous and destructive that it has been completely airbrushed from our national consciousness. In order to justify the land-grabbing colonial projects, you had to create an ideology. We, the Europeans or the Americans, have come to rescue the rest of the world from its depravity and backwardness. But in order to do that, you have to be able to demonstrate that the rest of the world is depraved and backward. From this arose the racism that is still with us today. It was a necessary component of the colonial project. Some people might claim, well, OK, we broke a few eggs to make this omelette. It's as if all those human beings were eggs. But look at the omelette. Isn't it fantastic? Look, we've made this fantastic omelette. Forget about all that unpleasant stuff and let's just celebrate where we are. Where we are is a continuation of the project. We commodified people's land and people's labor and turned it into our property. We're also destroying the rest of the living world alongside it. We don't have to be like this. We are the same human beings as anybody else. We're all part of the same big human family. We just have to recognize that, accept that. And of course, within Western countries, there are plenty of brilliant people resisting colonization, both internal colonization within our own countries and external colonization of other people's countries.